Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. So Christmas has come early this year. We have finally purchased what I'm gonna to consider to be the missing piece of the puzzle to our firewood operation. If you've been following our channel for a little while, you know that I've been growing this firewood business from the ground up, and we've been slowly adding to our equipment list over time. Let me show you what my current setup has been, all the equipment on that list up to this point, and then I'll show you what the missing piece is that we've been so desperately needing for the last two years. Stick around. All right, so I'm gonna organize this firewood business equipment list in the order in which the firewood is actually produced. So first things first, you've gotta cut the firewood. So to start off the list, I'm gonna talk about my chainsaws. So on the left there is a Husqvarna 455 Rancher. That was my first saw, and it is a great reliable saw, but once you really start getting into cutting firewood, you kind of reach its limitations. Um, it's great for limbing, it's great for some smaller diameter trunks and everything, but once you start getting into some 24, 28, 30 inch diameter trees, you're gonna wanna get something with a little more horsepower, a little more displacement. So that's when I upgraded to the Holtzforma G372 XP. The, the 455 Rancher is a 55cc saw. The G372 XP is a 71cc saw. So, you know, I would recommend if you're gonna start a firewood business, you're gonna be cutting quite a bit. You're gonna want at least two saws, a smaller one for limbing that's lighter, you can handle it for a longer period of time. And then you're gonna want a bigger, a bigger displacement chainsaw for cutting the big stuff. All right, so after the wood is cut, now we've gotta get it out of the woods somehow. So next on the list is this Polaris Ranger 570. It's got a dumping cargo bed on the back with a capacity of 500 pounds, but I can tell you from experience, I've had probably closer to 1,000 pounds worth of firewood in the back of there. This thing is great for getting in and out of the woods quick, and it's also low impact. When I show you my next piece of equipment, you'll know what I mean by that. So next on the list of equipment to get the firewood out of the forest is this compact tractor. This is a Coyote CK3510 that I purchased about a year and a half ago. Right now I've got it set up with a set of pallet forks on it, but I also have a grapple for it, and I've got a three-point carry-all for the back. This thing can really move a lot of firewood with one trip, and that's what I love about it. It can tow a lot more firewood out of the forest than the Polaris Ranger can at one time. However, it is a little bit slower, and it's also gonna tear up your trails. So I really only use this thing when the trails are either dry or frozen over. Other than that, I'm going to the Polaris Ranger because like I said, it's a lot more low impact for getting in and out of the woods. So next on the list is this grapple from Brute Force. This goes on the front loader of the tractor. And this thing is really nice because it allows me to carry whole logs out of the woods and I can carry three or four of them out at one time. So next on the list is this three-point carry-all. As you can see, this attaches to the three-point link arms on your tractor and it basically turns your compact tractor into a pickup truck. And you can see just how much firewood you can get on the back of the tractor when you carry it out of the woods. So now that we've got the firewood cut and we've got it carried out of the woods, the next part of the process is to split it. And for that, we're gonna use the Easton Made Axis. This axis is a commercial splitter. It's got a log lift on the right side. It's got a four second cycle time with a single wedge knife, and it's got a foot pedal. The operator station is at waist height, which is really nice so you're not bending over. And then you've got a seven foot conveyor on the end of it. Now that the wood is split, it's come off the conveyor. We've got it piled up here on these pallets. The next part of the process is to stack it in these IBC totes. I've done a couple of videos on these IBC totes. They hold a little over a third of a cord and they really cut down on the amount of time you spend stacking the wood. Once you've got the wood in these baskets, that should be the last time you have to touch it until you're either ready to throw it in your own wood stove or you're throwing it in a pickup truck to take it out for delivery. So now that you've got your firewood cut, split and stacked and you've let it season for a year, now it's time to sell it. And what this piece of equipment does is it gives me options on how I want to sell that firewood. So typically, you know, somebody's going to dry their firewood, let it season for a year, throw it in the bed of their pickup truck, and then go deliver it to a customer. But you're not really maximizing the earning potential that you have with that firewood. If you take just a little bit more time and bundle it, you can really upcharge for the firewood because you're offering convenience. You know, somebody doesn't have to buy a full cord at one time. They can just buy five or six bundles, enough for their campfire for the night, or enough for their fireplace for Christmas Eve. It's a real convenience factor for the customer to not have to store a third of a cord or a full cord on their property if they have limited space. So they're willing to pay a little bit more to have firewood on demand, and for that, you can charge a premium. So this firewood bundler here is made by Brute Force Manufacturing. It is motorized, it has a foot pedal right here, so when I click the foot pedal, it wraps right around and bundles the wood for you. Completely hands-free, except for loading the bundler and then cutting the plastic when you're done. 
So here's an example of what the finished product looks like after it comes off the brute force bundler. I sell direct to consumer via Facebook marketplace and I also sell wholesale to local businesses who have a market for campfire bundles. I always try to stay one basket ahead of schedule so that way whenever the call comes in, I have dry bundles ready to go and I can deliver on demand. So this IBC tote has 43 bundles in it right now and I would imagine that it weighs 1300 to 1400 pounds, something like that. And when the call comes in for a delivery, what I'll do is I'll throw the pallet forks in the tractor, load it up into the bed of my pickup truck and take it out for delivery. Now, like I said, I'm delivering to a lot of local businesses and they all have the equipment to unload me. They've either got fork trucks or something that can lift 1300 to 1400 pounds out of the bed of my pickup truck. So really once I bundle it, that's the last time that I have to touch it by hand. Lastly, on our list of equipment that we currently have in our setup is this 2016 F-150. I bought this about six months ago. I upgraded from a Toyota Tacoma, and the increase in towing capacity and bed capacity from a mid-size pickup to a full-size pickup has just been night and day. I've been able to do so much more with this truck, and I really think you need at least a half ton, probably a three-quarter ton or a one ton if you're gonna be selling firewood. So this is what we have been using to deliver firewood, and now we're gonna to get to the missing piece of the puzzle, and that is the seven x 14 dump trailer. I've been mentioning this in a couple other videos that I would love to have a dump trailer, and we have finally bought one. So as you can see, the first thing I've used this dump trailer for was to go pick up some more IBC totes. I've got 10 in there now, but I can easily fit 12. But that's one of the main reasons I bought this was so that I have something that I can go pick up these IBC totes in in bulk, uh, before I could only get about eight in my old utility trailer and the bed of the pickup and now I can get 16 I, I've doubled my capacity to go pick up IBC totes Another reason was for transporting the tractor around You know if I if somebody's got a tree down that they want taken care of I can take the tractor and the grapple load it in the dump trailer Go pick up the wood bring it back here dump it and then go back and pick up the tractor So it's gonna work great as an equipment hauler Another reason I got this dump trailer was I can use this for delivering firewood now instead of loading it in the bed of the pickup truck. I can also use it to park underneath the conveyor on the Easton made axis. That way when I go to stack those baskets, I can just stack it right out of the back of the dump trailer versus bending over to pick it up off the ground. So those are kind of my initial reasonings for buying this 7x14 dump trailer. I'm sure I'm going to find a lot more uses for it, uh, but that's just my initial thoughts on why I purchased this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these IBC totes unloaded from this dump trailer, and then I wanna test out to make sure that my compact tractor will fit in this dump trailer. Like I said, I wanna use it as an equipment hauler. So I'm gonna go ahead and load it up there and just make sure it fits. All the measurements I took say it should fit, but you know how sometimes measurements in reality can differ. So once I get these unloaded, we're gonna pull the tractor in and see how well it fits in there. So there we go. We got the coyote loaded up in the dump trailer with the back doors closed so it does fit. The only issue is I did have to rest the loader arms on the headboard of the trailer. Like I said, my tow vehicle is a Ford F-150, so this is the biggest trailer I could get with my tow vehicle. It's a 7x14 with a 10,000 pound GVW and the trailer itself weighs 3,300 pounds. So that leaves me with roughly 6,700 pounds of payload capacity. And I think the tractor itself weighs, you know, with the rear tires loaded, the front end loader, and the grapple, 
probably in the neighborhood of 4,500 pounds. So I'm well below my tow limit for the F-150. And I think as long as I get all four tires strapped down and get some straps around that loader arm too, I don't think anybody should bother me going down the road. So yeah, like I said, I really think that this is the missing piece of the puzzle to this firewood operation that I've started here. Be able to use this for so many different things from equipment hauling to moving firewood around here in the yard to delivering firewood, all that good stuff. I'm really looking forward to putting it to use and seeing what it can do. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and check out some other videos. Thanks for watching.